Okay, welcome to Fresh Set of Downs, another playoff edition, this time a PIAA edition, and we are just thrilled to have our guest tonight, Brian Stroll, head coach of Cocalico, the number 12 seed who just captured the District 3 5A championship last Friday night. How does that sound, Brian? That sounds great. <laughs> you can feel free to say that as many times as you want. <laughs> and, and that's, it's, it's really interesting because um obviously you and i have known each other for a while and uh you, you've been a long time i mean you, you've uh, been on the cocalico staff and now head coach here for two years um have obviously dave gingrich your predecessor was there for a long time do you feel that this team really has your imprint on it uh, i mean i feel like I took so much from what I learned from coach Gingrich for sure. And, um, you know, I think this being my third year now, you start to kind of feel more at home in the role and everything. But, um, you know, I wouldn't say my imprint. I think it has Calico's imprint on it. Um, you know, Dave took so much. He learned from Phil Kaufman and I took so much. I learned from him and, um, we try to just keep the culture that we have going at Calico and try to keep it moving forward. Dave, you got a question for coach? Yeah, coach, you know, I'm looking at the bracket, um, you know, you're, you went in as the 12th seed, you knocked off the fifth seed, the fourth seed, and then you knock off the number one seed, and then number two seed to win the district. How did you do it? <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of uh, strong belief from the kids for sure. Um, you know, we we said, we told the kids, we just need to get in. And once we got in, we felt like we were peaking at the right time. We felt like we had played really good football towards the end and uh, end of the regular season, I mean. So, uh, you know, I think the way we came out the first round of playoffs and how that E-Town game went, I think that gave them even more belief that, you know, we can keep this thing rolling. So, uh, you know, we knew it was going to keep getting harder. We we're going to play more difficult teams as we went. And, um, you know, Exeter, obviously a very good team and Solanco and Gettysburg, all the teams that we beat, uh, you know, they earn those seeds for a reason, but, um, you know, when, when you're in the playoffs, it's one and done and you just need to play a great game every Friday night. And, Joe, you got a question you know, for coach? Oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah. When did, when did you feel, was there any particular game that you felt this thing was coming together that, um, uh, that the pieces started to fit? Yeah. I mean, I'd probably say, Burke's Catholic. Uh, at halftime, we went in, it was 10 10, and it was a battle. And, you know, the final ended up 31 10, and we won that second half 21 0, obviously. Um, and I think that was where we just we started playing really physical football. And I mean, our defense has played well all year long, but um, I thought that second half was the best half of football we had played all year. Um, and we're able to keep that role. And I think the other big thing is turnovers like turnovers really hurt us early on in the season. Uh, we were a minus 10 through seven games. And since that point from week eight through 14, we're a plus 14, I believe. Wow. So yeah, you go from wow. minus 10 to plus 14, basically in the same amount of time. That's kind of crazy. It's, you know, probably the number one stat in football that leads to success or lack of lack thereof. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's certainly been a huge, huge change in how we've been playing. You know, you had to uh, play, you've played one extra game versus, uh, you know, a lot of the teams in the playoffs now because you had to play a first round game. How was the, you know, physical health of the team? Uh, honestly, uh, just commenting on it today and knocked on wood at the same time, but I think we should be dressing everybody on Friday. And, um, you know, it's pretty neat to not have anybody, you know, have, have to watch from the sidelines when, you know, you're celebrating a district championship and making this run that we're on. Um, you know, we had some semi-serious injuries kind of middle of the season, but some of those kids have come back now and um, or have worked their way back into the starting lineup or back into contributing. And, um, you know, it's been really neat to see those kids get back into the flow of things. And you know, as far as, you know, just the long, you know, the length of the season, uh, <laughs> you know, we've kind of toned back practice a little bit. Uh, cut out a little bit of time and tone back the amount of hitting just because, you know, at this point we're going to have played an extra half a season than teams who didn't make the playoffs. So, um, you know, we try to do things to break up the monotony of practice. We had um, a couple girls, soccer players came out the one day and 
we, we've been practicing <laughs> on the turf where the soccer nets are. And we did a little uh, competition where the girls kept taking shots at our seniors in goal with their helmets on and, you know, just <laughs> I do things like that to keep it interesting. Cause after 15 weeks of, and that's just 15 weeks of games. I mean, you go right. preseason and heat week yeah. and all summer long that you're doing things like it's a long time that we've been together, but uh, I think that's one thing that makes this team special too, is how well they get along with one another. And um, you know, I, I think, they, they don't want to see this end. They want to keep having time together. And I think that's been a big part of our success as well. Dave? Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, if fans haven't seen you talk about your offense, I know that, you know, if teams haven't seen that type of offense, it, it, it can be hard to stop. Uh, talk about your offense this year. Yeah. I mean, I think again, early on, what played us a lot was just turnovers. Um, mm -hmm. and in a triple option offense, you'll sometimes have that. Cause you know, it's not just that you're handing the ball off, but you know, I think we had some younger kids in some of those skill positions and they've really grown up. Uh, but you know, I think it's all based on, you can give the ball to the fullback, the quarterback can keep it quarterback can pitch it. And, you know, it takes time and effort. And, um, you know, some people ask, why don't you throw the ball that much? Well, when you, when you work on that triple option that you want to be the basis of your offense, to be able to feel confident that you can run it well, it takes a lot of practice time too. Um, same with our offensive line, knowing who they're blocking, who they're not blocking, who we're reading, that kind of thing. Um, but you know, I think oftentimes when you get in the playoffs, that is a good advantage for you because mm -hmm. some of the teams you play haven't seen that style of offense before. Um, so, yeah, I think hopefully that can help us out a little bit Friday night, but we'll have our answer. <laughs> before. Yeah. Joe, and talk about – yeah, go ahead, Joe. Is there any particular player that surprised you so far this year? Uh, do you ask, is there a particular player that surprised us? Yeah, yeah. So a kid that you may have had, uh, and you see it all the time, Coach, where you see someone there that's kind of, you see glimpses here and there, and then suddenly, you know, you're hoping they turn around, they turn that corner. Is there any uh, young young man on your team that this year made that, made that turn for you? Yeah, I mean, I could list so many. Uh, it's hard to <laughs> pick one or two. I feel like, you know, uh, we talk so many times about the growth that so many kids have made. Um, I'll, I'll point out, too, Josh Meyer, our quarterback, has uh, really been playing sound football, and he's become more of a threat running the ball and making good decisions, which, again, is a big part of you know the plus-14 turnover margin in the last uh, six games or whatever it's been, last seven games, I guess. Um, another kid, Dane Bollinger, uh, you know, we played Solanco the first time I know, and he, he plays outside linebacker for us. And then also he'll play tight end and he'll play some wide receiver. Uh, he can play both there, but you know, in that Solanco game there, there was just a couple things he was doing incorrectly that, you know, when we went back and watched that game again, as we're preparing for Solanco the second time, and then we saw how he played against Solanco the second time, like he was just a totally different player. Uh, but you go from week two of the season to week, 13 of the season at that point, um, you know, it was just awesome to see his growth and, you know, how he played the same team, the second chance he got. And I know it was something that uh, he was frustrated in himself for how he had played the first time and he wanted to do all he could to correct it. And he certainly did. And he was our defensive player of the week that week. And um, he's come a long way as well. They're both, you know, both those kids as well as so many of our kids are just competitors and, um, I think they take things personally that they want to try to get better. And it's been neat to see that throughout the year. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Um, so you're going to play uh, Pine Richland out of uh, district seven, a team that started the season one and three and just caught fire in, in one of the hottest teams out there in, in Western PA. Um, what's your thoughts on them? Well, I mean, first of all, they're extremely well coached. I mean, you watch them and, um, from their read steps to the way they flow to the football and, um, you know, their blocking schemes and blocking assignments, like they don't make many mistakes. Um, I think they play a physical brand of football. And, you know, I know after that one and three start, they had switched quarterbacks and um, mm -hmm. I moved their running back to quarterback. And, um, you know, with that, they've become very run heavy and they, he can still throw the ball very well too. Don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, I think they took that as their identity and, went with it and certainly have had a lot of success with it. So, um, you know, their, their coaching staff certainly has done a great job with, um, you know, taking that rough start and turning it around. So, 
Um, you know, they, they have plenty of weapons and their defense is extremely fast. So uh, we'll have quite the challenge. Yeah, it is going to be quite the challenge. Thankfully, I'm going to have opportunity to, to be there. I'll be broadcasting the game for NFHS Network. So I'll be able to shake your hand out on the field there. And it's, you know, you talk about all the running there. It's <laughs> probably going to be a pretty fast game <laughs> with the, with the, <laughs> with the Hopefully clock. Hopefully don't get paid by the hour Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, no, but, you know, as, as Dave talked about, uh, talk a little bit about the fact of, you know, resilience. I mean, for both of these teams, they were one and three, you were two and three, and you've both made it to a state semifinal football game. Talk a little bit about, you know, you talk about the light coming on, but talk about, you know, in retrospect, how this team has changed and, uh, you know, really evolved as the season's gone on. Yeah, I mean, I think it starts, number one, with the group of kids we have. Um, yeah, even when we were two and three, when we were three and four, you know, I was telling people, like, these kids are just fun to be around. Like, they enjoy being around each other. I think they enjoy the game of football. We've had, knock on wood again, we've had very minimal issues we've had to deal with you know whether it's in the classroom or whatever um you know off the field the kids have just been tremendous to work with and you know i think when you're two and three three and four whatever it may be you kind of have two choices do you just kind of play out the rest of your games or do you say you know what this isn't what we expect this isn't what we wanted we're going to turn this around and you know at that point we were kind of holding on to any last glimmer of hope to get into the playoffs um, you know, we knew we obviously needed to win out, but knew even if we did, we weren't sure if we get in. So you, know, you, you try to have that carrot to dangle in front of the kids. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of become more uh, in Kikalko's tradition to make the playoffs. And I don't think they wanted to, to be left out. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think they, they really kind of embraced that end of the season as you know, let's, let's end the season on a good note and see where it takes us. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's uh it's been a pleasure to watch. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm kind of close uh uh, you know, as far as proximity or whatever like that. We talked at uh, you know, the Lancaster, I still remember our conversation, Lancaster Lebanon League Media Day. I went back through and watched our interview there and hear heard what you had to say about the team. And now you're playing in a state semifinal. Uh Gosh, it seems a long way, a long time ago, doesn't it? It certainly does. You know, I remember hearing some of our seniors talk that day about, you know, their freshman year when we had won the district championship and how that was their greatest memory. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I kind of feel bad that our soft, their sophomore and junior year didn't have anything to quite match that. But you know, I think if you ask them now, their favorite memory has certainly changed to what's happened these last couple of weeks. And, you know, I, we talked to the kids today, like, yeah, you know, the big thing is, all right, so now you've won the district championship, but you're playing a team who has aspirations of winning a state title. And, you know, no Cacalico team has ever gotten past the semifinal round. So, you know, we've been talking about trying to make history as the first 12 seed to win a district championship. And, you know, now it's trying to make history and be the first team from Cacalico to ever make a state championship. Um, so kind of trying to refocus our goals. And, you know, we talked today, like, Friday is now behind us. You know, when, whenever the season ends, you can go back, you can enjoy it some more. But, you know, right now our focus is on Pine Richland and uh, what we have in front of us Friday night. Joe, you have a final question for coach? Uh, yeah, just um, did the kid, are the kids getting it? Because sometimes you don't really observe, you, you don't really absorb the journey while you're on the journey. And it's really kind of a shame. I think we all go through stages in our life like that, where you just like, then you look back, you know, um, do these kids, do your kids have a sense of the history that they have a chance to make? I think so. Um, you know, it's hard to get inside the mind of a 15, 16, 17 year old kid. Uh, it's been a little while since I was at that age. So, uh, but, you know, I think, I think when you, you walk around town or, you, you know, it's been really cool to see the community embrace this team too. And, um, you know, they had a nice send off for us on Friday when we left to go to the game and then all kinds of fire trucks and police cars bringing us back into town Friday afterwards, probably some noise ordinance, but people didn't care. And um, <laughs> it was really cool. And I think, yeah, from, from my perspective, 
it was really neat to see the kids get to enjoy that uh, and soak it in. And, you know, I told him before the game, it's one thing like, you know, okay, enjoy that they're sending us off, but we got a game to play and focus on that where, you know, when it was over and we were on our way home, it was just, you know, take it all in. And, uh, you know, I, I think most kids on our team had a pretty good weekend, but, um, you know, like I said, now it's kind of moving forward and they can look back later on and, uh, relive those pictures and videos and, um, you know, all the memories that were made so far, hopefully we can make some more. Well, this is Absolutely. the time of year, especially in district three. I think we kind of, you know, root for our own and as a district three guy, man, uh, you know, we're behind it 100%, uh, Brian, it's, uh, you know, really special to see you guys succeed and listen, best of luck Friday night. I'll be out on the field, shaking your hand. Like I said, before the game and, uh, you know, I'm really anxious to see you guys uh, uh, carry the District 3 flag there. And uh, best of luck, my friend, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you there Friday night. Okay, take care. You can just exit out, and we'll uh, continue the show. Take care, my friend. All right. Good luck, take Coach. Care. Good luck, Coach. All right, Thank see you, you later. Appreciate it. All right, bye-bye now. Yeah, yeah, he's got to have a job this year. He's got to have a job this year. Yeah, he has done a hell of a job. Uh, Brian's a great guy, um, you know, longtime assistant there. And he talked about, you know, the, the coaching legacy there that it's, yeah. you know, just kind of carried on. And uh, gosh, I remember, uh, you know, when he talked about, um, you know, state semifinal just three years ago, they were in the state semifinal and lost to Sheltonham in a real shootout at, at Hershey Park Stadium. I think like 56, 52. I, I ran more in that game up and down the field, I think, than in any game I had ever covered. And it was a spectacular game. Unfortunately, they came up, you know, a little bit short. But that coaching staff still remembers that very vividly. A lot of that same staff is on that um, uh, team there now. So uh, that's going to be a, a, a quite interesting. But I don't think I've ever seen a matchup where two teams did a complete 180. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, Pine Richland and, and Cocalico now, I mean, they're just a testament to never give up. I mean, people always say never give up these, both of these teams embody that, uh, to the nth degree, they didn't give up. They kept trying, they kept moving forward. And what happens? My gosh, they succeed. And, and one of them is going to end up in Cumberland Valley playing for a state championship. I think it's, it's just incredible. It is. So, all right, well, we're going to share my screen here. We're going to um, go ahead and um, uh, go through the brackets. And uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. We're gonna... well, where is my share screen? Here we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is terrible. Usually is pretty good about this, but I don't know what the heck is going on here. More, uh, gosh. Hmm. Share screen. There we go. Oh, my. All right. Now, there we go. How about that, huh? See it all right? Go. All right. So we are going to um, go through the brackets here. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll start with 1A. And... You know, probably some of the best games were uh, in 1A. Um, that uh, Steel High, Northern Lehigh, was was quite the game, wasn't it, Dave? Yeah, I mean, 42-35 win. Uh, Steel High gets a late touchdown with, I think, four seconds to go. Um, tremendous win by them. Uh, Northern Lehigh did a tremendous job. I, you know, I wasn't at the game, but what I heard was, uh, you know, they kind of kept them on the sidelines, their offense and, uh, you know, staying long drives and, and, you know, it, it worked, but man, when steel high gets that offense going, it, it's tough. And, uh, um, you know, they win a thriller, they move on and Hey, we have a rematch from last year where uh, it wasn't a semifinal game. It was, I think, first round where Canton knocked off Steel High. Um, you know, this is the matchup, you know, that I expected. I think most 
expected this matchup. And, uh, um, you know, here we are. Steel high can. I'm just surprised the game is in Shimoka. Um, you know, with Steel High actually technically kind of being, yeah, uh, uh, that the game isn't somewhere in District 3. Now, obviously, it depends on, you know, what teams want to host a game. But that's well, a yeah. hike for Steel High. And Canton, I think it's it's closer to Canton than it is Steel High, isn't it? Uh, I mean, Canton's pretty far up there. I yeah, think okay. they're more near the New York border. Right. So it's a little travel for both. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you look at the bracket, you, you would think this would be in District 3. But, again, if stadiums aren't available, well, you know, this is sure. what was available and, and, and this is where it is. But, uh, you know, this is – listen, we, we've said it many times, the top three East teams, Steel High, Canton, Northern Lehigh, well – here we are with the you know steel high can match up and uh you know the winner of this um you know i i think might be the favorite to win the state title uh look at the west bracket another team um that was a uh what 10 seed out of district seven union yeah playing another the cinderella Port, uh, story there yeah yeah i mean uh, kikalko's the lowest uh seeded team to make it to the semifinals and and union is the second with uh you know being a 10 seed knocking off which was bishop canavan I mean, yeah 26 nothing so um you know that's going to be interesting matchup but uh you know i think you know for steel high this year and can i think it's you know state champs are bust this year yeah, I, I I think it's it's been that way with Steel High for a long time. Uh not not just this season. I mean, you know, going back to the year uh I think they, they won it three years ago. Uh it, it really is is always state championship or bust for Steel High, the the kind of talent um that you know that you know that they put out there. Um and in the two A bracket, um Southern Columbia, Trinity, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, there's still a lot of great stories, team stories in each particular um, bracket. Trinity there, I tell you what, that's a story in and of itself, kind of a resurgence team. I mean, two, Coach three, Hill. Years, two three years ago, I mean, Trinity was nowheresville. Um, and now look at them in the state semifinal. Southern Columbia – you know, reports of their demise were greatly exaggerated, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they played and knocked off the defending, I think, state champs in Class A, Bishop Guilfoyle. And, you know, they just absolutely, uh, you know, ran the ball all over them. Their two big studs were, you know, I think a combined almost 300 yards rushing, like four or five touchdowns, you know, we thought Southern Columbia was done. And and I think a lot of people thought that, but you know what? They are healthy at the right time yeah. playing some of the best <clears throat> ball that they played all year. And uh, what a great matchup this is going to be in Sealands Grove uh, in district four area, you know, coach Hill, um, a steel high grad, um, a tremendous football player played in the NFL a little bit. You know, he's done a tremendous job with this Trinity team who's played some really tough competition. And, and you know, when you talk about District 3, hey, mid-pen, there's what, I think four teams still yeah. alive from the mid Incredible. 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 From, from one I mean, conference, that's from one that's conference. the best. That's the best in the state. I mean, one con or well, well, one league. I shouldn't say one, you know, but one league that that has you know four teams. That's pretty incredible. And still Absolutely. a great story. Westinghouse, uh, a great story mm -hmm. from the West there. Uh, Pittsburgh City League playing to you know get to a state championship. Playing, you know, I think it's a great story that they're playing Steel Valley. Um, you know, uh, so I think that that's going to be, um, you know, another good story. So, um, and now in 3A, uh, Joe, I tell you, Garetti, 
Um, they're up against uh, why I'm missing area. This is a rematch of the uh, state semifinal last year, and they're playing at Germantown Super Site, which is surprising. Yeah, I think last year was last year up there. Penn Ridge. Year, it was there. at Penn Ridge, I think. Oh, okay. So it was still down here. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now I don't know how much why missing's graduated. Uh, I do know uh, a, a lot of things. Obviously, are going to come down to how how Sean Battle's able to hold up. I mean, he was he he was playing that game. Uh, he 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 make a long run or make an amazing play. Come on the bench, sit down for 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 sometimes a series. Uh, throw his guts up, get hydrated, go back on the field. Get another amazing play. Come back off the field. Uh, uh, get himself hydrated again. Uh, he is healthy. Uh, someone like a Sean Battle, who's uh, a BC commit, is going to cause problems for anyone. Uh, their defense played very well, but they also played well against uh, the Northwestern Lehigh team. Were a group of real good kids, tough kids. Um, it surprised me that uh, Coach Josh Schneider had gone for it very early in that game on fourth down numerous times and was held on numerous times. Now, I see his point of view after the game. Hey, we didn't, you know, we thought it would be a track meet. We, you know, we didn't want to turn around and, you know, we needed the ball. We needed to take possession for as long as we could. Uh, their idea was correct. They just could not exactly uh, execute it. Yeah. Now, I got a question here. I mean, how much do you either of the two you guys know about why missing? I mean, I know they are uh, uh, they are they are they were, they were state runner ups. This is they're going for correct me if I'm wrong. They're going for the third straight berth in a state final. Yeah, you know, it seems to be funny yeah. in three A because there always seems to be a team that is like the Buffalo Bills of uh, the PIAA. It seems to be in 3A. It was Middletown who made three consecutive championship games and lost all three. Uh, why I'm missing now shooting for their third straight championship game appearance. Do, do you uh, guys why, do you guys know about anything about that? Well, why I'm missing is, uh, I don't know, like maybe five minutes from my house. And oh, I oh, did. Okay. <laughs> I, bro I broadcast like their 3A district championship game. Um, I mean, I get all the why missing news. Uh, mm -hmm. What I would be concerned about if I were why missing is uh, Goretti's uh, speed. Um, you know, they were, uh, you know, I was at that game last year when they played uh, Joe as well. And I think why I'm missing, even though that they won that game pretty handily, I think that they had problems with the Goretti speed. And um, I'm really anxious to see how why I'm missing plans on handling that speed. Why I'm missing typically is going to play a high percentage brand of offense. They're not going to throw the ball. They're not going to, they definitely aren't going to be able to throw like fly patterns against the uh, Goretti secondary. So I'm really anxious to see what kind of an offensive game plan. Uh, why I'm missing throws at a Newman Goretti. And now, now Bruce, uh, were, they, were they hit hard by graduation? Uh, they, they, they were hit hard, but they reloaded. Um, they have a lot of great yeah. players. Uh, I think physically, um, they are as tough as as any team uh, in 3A. They've got Jevin Williams, who uh, tackle, who's a Penn State commit, and they've got some uh, great other role players along that uh, offensive line that are going to open up some holes. The question is, is whether or not they'll be able to run through those holes before that fast, ready defense, you know, tracks them down. And I think that, you know, I think that that's the key is is how well are are they going to be at the skill position to get through and around the Goretti uh, speed? I think that uh, Wyoming will control the line of scrimmage, but you know uh, how will they get two yards? Will they get three yards? Um, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, looking at it, um, they Wyoming missing as a team has rushed for almost forty five hundred yards. Um, they're averaging as a team over eight yards a carry. So they have their three main runners. Um, they almost have three 1,000 yard runners on their team. Uh, they're leading rushers, Matthew Kramer. Um, so 
you know, they're going to throw a lot of bodies at them. But this is an interesting matchup because probably the last time Alby faced a Hawaii missing team down in Philly was when he was the head coach at Amotep when Hawaii missing one down there. And I think, Joe, you and I were talking about this. Um, I don't think he's ever beat Hawaii missing as a coach. So that's that's motivation in itself right there. But you're right. It's it, it's listen. It's going to come down to can why am missing move the ball with their running attack and can they somehow slow down Sean Battle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing, uh, seeing Newman Garetti uh, covering that game Saturday, and I've done my share of Newman Garetti games since uh, Coach Alby Crosby has been coach of the Saints. Mm-hmm. Is uh, and something I told Albie after that game is that that's the best I've seen them look in a while. In yeah. a while, um, the penalties were down. They were incredibly efficient. Um, maybe one or two breakdowns. Maybe I would say at the most, maybe three breakdowns the whole game. Uh, Northwestern Lehigh went for it on fourth down five times during the course of the game. Converted one of those fourth downs, which resulted in the only Northwestern Lehigh score. Um, Dave, have you seen how close the Vikings were? Right, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. How how close in terms of ability is Northwestern Lehigh to why I'm missing? Or would that be an absolute mismatch? Yeah, no, why I'm missing is definitely a different level. Um, okay. Again, this is a team that's been at the state finals, been state runner up the past two years, and hey, they're right where they want to be for another chance to, you know, get to Cumberland Valley and, and possibly, you know, win a state title. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it is, I think it is uh, the classic example of which team is going to impose their will on the opponent. I mean, it, the, I think you have two contrasting styles of team and um, I think it's a distinct advantage that they're playing at the, the Germantown super set. I really do. I think, uh, um, I think that it, you know, that it, it, it is enormously difficult for teams that aren't accustomed to playing in that atmosphere to go in there and, and play well. I think it just plays on a team psyche, but t- you know, that's just me. Well, I, I will say this Northwestern Lehigh came down over the weekend down in South Philly, uh, just a mile away from the, uh, the, the stadium complex down here in Philadelphia. And they had far more fans than New Magretti. Wow. Far more fans than New Magretti. Uh, wow. It's a well, shame. That's great I mean, to hear. Just, yeah, there's no, I mean, those young people in that program don't go, don't get the support that they deserve. And that's, that's really, that's really a shame. And on the Western side of the bracket, uh, Bill Vernon, probably a um, significant favorite. Um, they're playing a central team who made it to the championship game last year and really wasn't uh you know i think they were like a six seed or something like that uh no i think that looks like they were a three seed uh out of district uh, five six nine but still not the favorite that they were last year um boy bell vernon is very tough um i like them you know to win that game And so on to 4A. This is getting interesting now. Mm. Um, and, you know, Crestwood kind of like, <laughs> you know, from uh, parts unknown, even though they're the number one seed out of District 2, uh, not a lot of people giving them a lot of credit against Bishop McDevitt, Dave. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, listen. This McDevitt team is just <laughs> absolutely stacked. You know, I, 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 I've said it before. Um, I think most people think we're, we're going to see a rematch of Bishop McDevitt, Aliquippa. But listen, there's a game to be played on both sides, the East and West bracket. And in and, and this one, you know, it, it, it's Noah Schultz. I mean, we talked about him last week. You know, a kid that's over 2,400 yards rushing, 
35 touchdowns. Um, you know, they don't throw the ball much, but for them, they got to find a way. And that's for Crestwood to, now? Crestwood, yes. Yeah. And, and, and they got to find a way to be creative and get this kid in open space. You know, not just handing the ball, you know, short passes, uh, line them up at wide receiver, maybe have them run. You know, I don't know if he does punt and kick returns, but, you know, just try to get him as much touches as you can and, and hope this kid could break, you know, a few long ones. But, uh, but again, you know, I think the story is could Crestwood's defense – somehow slow down this McDevitt offense. I mean, look what they did last week against a pretty darn good Mannheim Central team. I mean, Mannheim Central has, I don't think, ever been shut out in the playoffs. And and to do that, um, this McDevitt team's pretty special. I mean, to use one of Joe's expressions – McDevitt just comes at you in waves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, offensively, defensively, I mean, their offensive line is enormously impressive. I did broadcast that game between McDevitt and Man I'm Central last week, and uh, enormously impressive uh, performance. That, that's all you can say. Um, and yeah. uh, deep passing, short passing, um, you know, the, the offensive line, uh, the defensive line, basically, I mean, I think they allowed maybe one run of, of over 10 yards the entire game. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive group. And um, but you're right. I mean, Crestwood's only hope is to be creative, um, you know, onside kick it, do what you got to do. A lot of trickeration. Um, use that McDevitt speed against them. OK, uh, do a lot of misdirection. Uh, that might be the only um, thing that they've got in their uh, repertoire to maybe slow this McDevitt team down. I tell you what, they're just, they're just enormously impressive, especially when you're walking around with them out on the field. I mean, they're just an enormously impressive group, and you know, um, not many teams li- that you see like like that. I can tell you that. I mean, Coach Wechter and the gang there. Man, they they've just got one heck of a team, and obviously, I agree with you. I think Aliquippa is going to make short work of Central Catholic. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I mean it's it, it's it, it is you know they're the last standing uh, District Eleven team. Uh, you know District Eleven. Uh, you know my hats off to them. They uh, went into you know the weekend after or the you know the yeah weekend after her, or uh, thanksgiving and had six teams still in it um you know tremendous uh performance by them and uh um it's going to be a challenge i mean caden Schaefer had a tremendous game last week they need to run the ball and keep that great Aliquippa offense off the field. I, I know we say this a lot, but, you know, when it comes to this time of the year, you know, you're playing the best of the best. Yeah. And um, it is going to be a challenge, but I, I think most people are going to favor Aliquippa McDevitt in a rematch in the state final. Which which they assume was won by Aliquippa, right? It was. Yes. Yeah, it, it was. Yes, it was. And in, in quite a game, that's for sure. And, and, and I don't know if I blipped out earlier because I was asking you guys, the Central from the previous classification uh, class 3A, is that Central Valley or Central? Are they Central. Uh, no, Central, 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 Central Valley, Central Valley moved up in classification. They had to uh, they moved up in 4A and Aliquippa beat them for the uh, Whippeal championship. I can see it. I see it here. Gotcha. So. So in 5A here, this is uh, some really interesting stuff. Joe. This is all Joe. Upper here. Dublin, he, he... Imhotep Charter. Talk to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 think, I think this is going to be a game. I think it's going to be a competitive game. I have people looking at me as if I come from Mars. Well, you know, Imhotep's <laughs> done this and that. Well, well, they, don't cool. they do that even if you're not talking about football? But. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, 
and Owen Motep just smashed Whitehall 55 to 7. But in but but Upper Dublin, I believe Upper Dublin was scored for the first time in the uh in, in, in the uh state playoffs. They they just were scored upon by by Rustin, but they still won pretty handily 21 to 7. Uh I still say uh Imhotep is maybe a minus seven, a minus eight going into this. But again, again, my point of reference is what Upper Dublin's done building that 14 and 0 record this season and they've done it against 6A schools and we certainly know Imhotep has 6A talent. Yeah. So that's um, a great point. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game. Stover, he's going to have to pull out everything and anything to win this game and he's capable of doing that. Coach Brett is is an excellent coach as we we all know coach Devin Johnson is on the other side of Imhotep. Um it's got to be a matter of Upper Dublin's offense being able to turn around and find something, anything against that Imhotep defense. Uh, I do believe Imhotep uh, will have an easier time scoring against the Upper Dublin defense. Uh, so if, if Upper Dublin can can turn around and generate some offense, slow this game down, they have a shot. I'm not saying they're going to win, uh, but I'm saying they have a shot, and there's got to be a reason why – they wound me up like a little toy as usual and pointed me in that direction Friday night. And I'll be there. I'll be there with Zahicken. I'll be there with Zahicken. I, I look very much forward to that game. Yeah, that's going to be uh, really interesting. Um, and then, obviously, Dave, uh, you know, the 12th seed coming out of uh, – the, the final team to make it in rarely wins the district championship. But Cocalico did it. Um, they're on a roll. Both of these teams are on a roll. Pine Richland and and Cocalico. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, I think that there are two things that are going to determine this one. I think it's going to be turnovers and special teams, because I think both teams are going to be able to run the football on their opponent. I mean, they've kind of proven that over 15 games. Um, and that's why I kind of asked the question of, you know, of uh coach stroll is that they've played and this kind of goes back to this you know obviously this whole thing about Mm -hmm. you know teams getting in and and what have you but they've played one more game than most of the teams that they're playing and they've still been able to come out on top um but uh you know i don't know is there going to be anything left in the tank um you know emotionally i've seen it so many times that teams you know (laughs) that they just get to that point. They've won the district championship and it's maybe not the physical, but the emotional tank is, is just empty. And I'm really concerned about Cocalico uh, and the emotional aspect of game. You know, Brian talked about it game after game, mm-hmm. after game, having to go and go and go and be in the underdog and win and win and win. Is there anything emotionally left in that tank? Physically, there may be, but the game is so emotional. Uh, Joe, what are your thoughts on that? Um, it's interesting because we know the history of Pine Richland. It's a program that's been there and done that. Um, yeah. The other side of it with Coach Brian and Calico is this. You got the beauty of your situation is what do I have to get anxious about if I don't know what to get anxious about? Um, Uncharted waters. Just, yeah, so yeah, it's sometimes it's a beautiful situation where I don't know what I don't know. Um, we do see situations where teams get into uh, bright lights, big city. I mean, we saw it last year, and again, I, I bring it up with a very young um, San Jose Prep team. I mean, those some of those younger guys on the team were a little bit overwhelmed by that setting, and and it and it took them a little bit. Where as um, Mount Lebanon, who had not been there before, but to have a senior laden group that, you know what, nothing was going to phase them. Um, but they I, had a I, coach that's been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know what Pine Richland has uh, back, uh, but I, I'm assuming, again, it's a case of been there, done that, and we know what it is like to be in this setting. Um mm-hmm. Have you guys? I, I, I obviously, Bruce, you know quite a bit about uh, uh, Calico. Does anyone know anything about Pine Richland? Well, Pine Richland, uh, just you know, the the coaching staff. It's a veteran coaching staff, not mm-hmm. necessarily to Pine Richland because this this is really their first year together. 
but a yeah. veteran, a veteran staff, um, and some players that you know are still on that squad that experienced a state championship just mm-hmm. you know two short years ago. So uh, weren't they weren't they a six A? Weren't they a six A? They, they were no, they won yeah. they won they won a five A title uh uh over a cathedral. But they were six A at one yeah. at one point. That that's correct. They were they they'd won they won a six A title and they won a five A title. So yeah. um you know they they have they obviously have pedigree but there's been a lot of changeover. I don't think that that lowers the expectation. Um, and I, like I said, I, I would guard against uh, just the fact that emotionally, you know, how much is left in the tank <laughs> for Cocalico when you're coming all the way as far as they've come to come this far, uh, whether they still have anything, you know, left. I mean, uh, Pine Richland uh, has still been, even though they started out poorly, um, they've been a favorite. Okay. They came yeah. in as like the number two seed in the Whippeal and five a, so it wasn't like they came out of nowhere to do this. In fact, most people favored them because they had really beaten everybody as some good teams, very handily down the stretch. And mm-hmm. so they were, uh, they were not off the radar by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but, uh, it's, it's going to be a really uh, tough game. I mean, my heart, is with Cocalico, but um, I think Pine Richland is going to be a real tough out for the Eagles. Yeah. I mean, what's your thought, Dave? Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think last week wasn't Pine Richland down two touchdowns and then came back to win it. Um, I, I wasn't at the game, but I think I saw someone posted that um, if that was the case. And again, you know, you look at Cathedral Prep, were they a little rusty not playing for three weeks, but Hey, Pine Richland, you know, they won a close one, 21, 14. I think one thing Calico might have going for them is, you know, they run that triple option. Not many teams see that, you know, type of offense. And when you haven't seen it, um, it, it could be troublesome. So, you know, mm-hmm. to prepare for that, um, it, you know, it, it, especially when, you know, if you don't have the players to prepare, I'm sure they do. Um, this could be an interesting game. Could Calico just run the ball and, and could Pine Richland stop it? But, you know, I think Pine Richland is more incapable of, you know, scoring quick and scoring when they need. Um, but I would slightly, you know, I would favor definitely Pine Richland in this one. But listen, Kikalika, Cinderella story. They've been the underdog all through this bracket, barely made it in. So you can't count them out. It's going to be a a fun game to watch this weekend. And I think, I'll be honest with you, I think that the 6A bracket may be the most entertaining 6A bracket uh, in recent uh, memory, uh, and so many storylines. Um, we'll start on the we'll start on the western side. Even though those are two teams from the Mid Pen Conference, our team that yeah. our team that we adopted State College <laughs> as an Eastern team uh, playing Harrisburg, um, uh, and I'm pretty familiar with with both teams. Uh, Harrisburg, I've done. Gosh, I've reported on or done, I think, uh, four of their games this year, State College, um, too. But um, obviously, uh, you know, we had Coach uh, Lintall on um, as a guest, and he was pretty confident uh, at then. You could kind of tell 13 and 0, uh, but they're having to beat a team for the second time in the season, a Harrisburg team. My God playing their best football of the year i mean the the coaching job that the harrisburg staff did last week and winning the district championship i was just totally floored one of the things that i always feel in postseason football especially against an opponent that you're familiar with because they were playing manheim township who beat them earlier in the season is to break tendency and harrisburg had been doing nothing but just running it down people's throats all three playoff games. So what do they do? 
for the entire first quarter of their game against Manhunt Township, they did nothing but throw it. I mean, <laughs> and clearly Manhunt <laughs> Township was not prepared for that. Um, and so just a, an enormous uh, respect for the coaching job that, that uh, Harrisburg did in that game. Obviously a lot of respect for State College. They've won mm. every way possible. They've come from behind. They've outscored opponents. They've played – uh, keep away they're physical um i mean they've done it all ways i don't see a lot of weaknesses in state college i think it's going to be an incredible game i'm fortunate enough that i'll be uh, broadcasting that game with my buddy bob long up there in um altoona i mean what a toss-up i mean uh, uh dave what do you think yeah i agree uh uh this is a rematch from earlier in the year, right? Yep. And, you know, I I think this one, you know, both teams are playing tremendous ball. I think Harrisburg's really, you know, starting to catch some fire. Um, but, uh, you know, State College won this game earlier this year, 20 to 6. And uh, I'll tell and you what, I think keep this away. one. You know, that was yeah. that game of keep away. They just held, you know, they just ran it and play ball control and, and everything else. But yet they, 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 they get down to Cumberland Valley and they win like what 50 to 43 or <laughs> you know, they, they can well, play it, all kind of game, whatever game you give me, I can play it better is the, their attitude. Yeah. I mean, you know, they could possibly shut them down. If it's a track meet, they, they've been there, done that. So I, I expect this game to, be back and forth a close game and and you know i i'm, I'm kind of picking state college to win a close one and, and move on to uh represent the west in the uh 6a bracket you know any thoughts on this one uh, not really i don't have much familiarity with I, i'm familiar with both programs i don't have a familiarity with the, uh, the personnel of both programs how close was the regular season game obviously? 20, it was 20, 20 to 6, to six. So I'm sure State College pretty much handled them pretty easily. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I did. I mean, I covered that game. I thought that they did. I thought that they did only because there were a couple of things. First off, it was um, when they played, and uh, but also, um, yeah, it was just uh, State College just kind of had their number on that day, and and they kept the ball away, and Harrisburg just couldn't get a lot going. Actually, their starting quarterback I think was out. Uh, that for that game too so mm -hmm. um and, and they've ripped off five straight wins since that loss yeah absolutely but obviously the 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 game near and dear to your heart joe is uh, mm. obviously prep and garnet valley Oof. i would, they I look would good. and look and i was shocked that it, it's at the super site okay i i thought that it could have been maybe outside a philly you know somewhere uh, another well, super actually, no, this game. year. This year it's, it's District Twelve. It's just it's District Twelve. For last year it was District One. Yeah. So the game was held at Ridley. This year it's District Twelve, and they had um. They didn't have. I don't think they had any choice. Um, I don't think uh, O'Hara was interested, even though it's technically a suburban school. It's considered District Twelve Catholic League. I'm surprised they, they didn't get like Franklin system. Field or something like that. Maybe uh, uh, again, uh, that's that's they wanted it at Penn. I know the the Penn the uh, Saint Joe's Prep people wanted it at Penn. It would have been a great atmosphere, an amazing setting, but yeah. that that does cost money. And yeah. uh, I mean, there's there's a chance. I mean, they're going to get they they're going to get a couple thousand people for this game. Uh, a lot of obviously a lot of Garner Valley people will be going up to the northeast for it. Um. It's going to be a, a a pretty popular a pretty popular game to be there and watch. Um, but I, I I think here now, which kind of cracks me up. Uh, I saw this the previous week. Uh, Alex Sanchez came back from injury. Dave saw this last week, uh, and yeah, I say Adam Sanchez coming back from injury. So um, <laughs> I mean, what's the saying? The rich richer. Uh, so these young men are back for St. Joe's prep. I believe Isaiah, well, I think he's a freshman, um, speed to burn. And uh, Samaj Jones is just, he's only seems to be <laughs> only oh. getting better with each, each pass and each down. Um, 
I will say this about Garden Valley. Um, they have a chance. Uh, they have a chance what they're going to have to do. They uh, This is going to sound strange. They can't play tempo. They have to slow the game down. You know, um, ugly game. And and and, yeah. and 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 fudge it up if they have to turn around, go you know go into the you know uh, into the back to the his hand, you know just before they snap the ball, shoot time up, keep the ball out of Samaj Jones's hands, keep the ball out of the St. Joe's prep offense hands. They're going to have to control it like that. They can't play tempo because you get into a track meet with St. Joe's prep, you are looking at the same kind of blowout that they they experienced last year and last year. Team Eric Eric Van Wick did a hell of a job in his first year as head coach with this with this team and this program. Um, they came back with only two starters. Uh, one of the two starters is the uh, the the, the Kidrew Van Horn who had an incredible game against CB West. Um, they are uh, they won't quit. Garner Valley is not going to quit. You know they are a bunch of tough, rough kids. But here's the deal. St. Joe's Prep is, they are bigger, they are stronger, they are faster. Um, they can hurt you in so many different ways. And I don't know if Garnet Valley can combat all the various ways St. Joe's Prep comes at a team. Um, you're dealing with a St. Joe's Prep team that went down to begin the season in, in, in late August, early September, down the, against the St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And, and the the St. Thomas Aquinas team is is loaded with D one. I mean, that could have been a, a you know a low level D one football game right there between those two programs. Um, Garner Valley has Division one athletes. I, I don't know. I wouldn't define them as having a Division one football player. Uh, St. Joe's Prep has about twenty or twenty five Division one players, and a high level Division one players. Um, we still haven't seen uh, some of these guys, which is even more frightening. And it's also a team that Dave saw this last week. I saw this two weeks ago. And you see the coaching staff. You literally see the coaching staff putting the screws to these guys. Right now. I mean, they were up 35-6 to six against Northeast. And Coach Roken laid into his team at halftime. Absolutely laid into them to such a degree. We can hear him yelling through the brick at halftime. At Northeast High School, and Dave experienced the same thing last week after the game. You're you're dealing with a, a you know what what did they drop fifty? They dropped okay. They, they won fifty two to fifty two to twenty one against a pretty decent Brooklyn team. And Coach Roken yeah. still that's fine because again, this is a team that standard is 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 high. It's well, you know, they are they are they are a standard. And their standards are high. They like to keep their standards high. And and you sense it now that last year, which I do know for a fact, and it's kind of strange coming from me, knowing the St. Joe's Prep program as well as I do, they were kind of happy to be there at the state for this. It was a young team with a with a with a starting sophomore quarterback. They were just and I'll say they were just kind of happy to be there. And let's roll the dice. Let's see what we can do against Mount Lebanon. All right. This year now, this is a team. That is mission driven. This is a team. Uh, these sophomores and juniors that are contributing to this team saw, and the seniors for this team saw those seniors last year walk off that field. And that is a very, very rare sight at St. Joe's Prep. Uh, so I, I hate to go cliche here, but I'm going to go cliche. This is a team that's on a mission, and they are not going to stop at anything getting in the way. Team that can get in the way out of the four teams that are left at 6A, Big College, Harrisburg, Garner Valley, St. Joe's Prep. Out of those four teams that are there, the team that beats St. Joe's Prep, I think you guys St. know where I'm going St. Joe's Prep exactly. I've seen them, what, they five times? I've seen them five times this year. More than five times. They've been penalized over 10 times for over 100 yards in four of the five games. Yeah, that's always the case with, you know, obviously teams like that. It's, it's you know, they implode rather than they get beaten. Uh, Dave, your thoughts? I mean, obviously you saw prep last week. and oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, The first set. half, <laughs> seven drives, seven touchdowns, 
I mean, Samaj, you know, four total touchdowns, uh, two throwing, two running. He had, uh, uh, if you go on my Twitter, um, I have a tweet that says highlight reel where he leaped over yeah, a I saw that. defender. That, that was a pretty amazing one. And ran at 42 yards, uh, you know, just incredible uh, team. But, you know, you know, looking at that game and, and we were, you know, he was just saying that is the start of the second half, um, you know, uh, Parkland came out, got the kickoff, ran at 95 yards for a touchdown. Then they had uh, another, um, you know, touchdown late in the quarter. Um, but another special teams uh, play, I think, set that up. So he wasn't happy with um, the special teams play the second half, even though, you know, they handily won and, and Mercy ruled uh, Parkland. Uh, like Joe said, you know, they have a standard that they expect to play by. And, you know, when – it's not at that standard. Uh, he he really lets those players know it. Yeah. So, but he's right. Um, this team is so focused to get to Cumberland Valley next week and ultimately win the state title. And it's going to take a great effort to beat this team. Yeah, six yeah, it, A six A has begun. 6A levels been instituted by the PWA by the PW BIAA in 2016. This will be the seventh uh 6A state tournament in football. Preps been every one of them, but preps been preps been to the previous with a strong possibility of winning the seven. Um this would be their ninth trip to the state finals in 10 years. And um one thing you just don't want to do is piss off St. Joe's prep. And you piss them off when they tend to lose the previous year. So this is a, this is a team, and again, it's a team led by Josiah Trotter, uh, who right now is I, – I don't know if I'd want to be next to Josiah or anywhere near him when he eats. <laughs> He's, there's uh, there's Keep uh, your hands and feet away from his mouth. Huh? Yeah, there's a storm brewing, man. And um, and and, it, and it's coming. Uh, I was teasing the Garner Valley kids after their their very impressive victory over CB West uh, on Friday night, and uh, talking to some of the guys. I said, the, "I said the beast is out there, and he's hungry, and, and they know it. Um, it has a chance to be a really good football game, but Garner Valley can't make any mistakes. And knowing the coaching staff, and knowing a number of the guys in the coaching staff, as well as I do." Um, I made that comment to some of the guys uh, Friday night walking off the field after Garner Valley's victory over CB West. And they, they know, they know what's out there. They know what's ahead of them. Um, and they also know um, they can't make many mistakes. And, and it's a Garner Valley team that doesn't make many mistakes. They are not penalty prone. Uh, they do play a very, very disciplined brand of football, whether or not, again, they want to go, they want to go tempo, which I knew do know they they like to go. I mean, both CB West and Garner Valley went tempo early in that game uh, last week, and you saw you know both teams scored on the first two possessions uh, before Garner Valley just took off with it. But it's a speed level, and that's the biggest thing. And and and, and Dave knows this. Bruce, you know, I mean, we've we've seen St. Joe's play a zillion times. It's the speed level that Garner Valley is going to have a tough time, Chuck. Yeah, uh, it speed kills. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a, a pretty great weekend of games uh, mm -hmm. all around. Um, and then, wow, I mean, we're we're all poised for Cumberland yeah. Valley. How fast the season has gone. Um, and uh, But it, it's been a great ride. I mean, I think that uh, the season has turned out to be everything we had hoped. Um, and uh, I think that that's the best thing. It, you know, we've kind of slid by with, uh, with, with, with everything kind of being settled out on, out on the field for, you know, the first time in a couple of years. And I think that's the single biggest thing that we can be thankful for, you know, going into the state playoffs. So. Absolutely. I mean, we have some teams that we could say are old friends that, you know, we see year in and year out. But then you have the great stories like Union out of uh, District Seven, Armstrong, I mean, Calico. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean teams that uh, uh, 
are normally not there. And, and, you know, for a 10th and 12th seed to make it this far, my hat's off that, you know, this is what is the beauty of high school football. You just never know. You're talking about 14 to 18 year old kids and you never know what could happen. And, you know, this is why I love high school football so much. You know, it's just such a great game and, and Hey, we're two weeks away from uh, yep. heading to the finals there. All right, guys. Well, listen, great show. Uh, we'll sit back and see what transpires the rest of this week. And then obviously the weekend. And we'll be back next week with the uh, Cumberland Valley edition of, uh, you know, fresh set of down. So for Dave Micah and Joe San Laquito, my name is Bruce Badgley. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week. Take care now.